welcome to my channel. My name's Angela and this is Devon Thread Tales. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I thought I would go through a bit of a plans video with you. Now I know that I have shared with you that I've lost my sewing mojo, my sojo, sewing mojo, however you want to say it. Um, and I still feel a little bit like that, but I have to say so many of you were so, so lovely on that video that I shared and gave me lots of hints and tips. And that was really great. Now I'm not there. I'm not fully sort of back with it, <laughs> but I am doing my very best to try and instigate that. Now, one lady did say, best advice is don't force it. And I think that is so, so true and so right thing is I do want to sew it's just that I'm a little bit lost with what I am sewing so I'm making a bit of a plan they are simple plans and they are not of a timely nature now one of them is sort of but I'm not actually going to get myself too tied up and worried about timing if I don't get it done so that'll all become clear in a little bit so <laughs> should I get on and tell you what I've planned okay so first of all ironing board cover now I did say to everybody that I was going to do an ironing board um so along I'm going to do that next week um I have lots and lots of work and um, bits and pieces sort of admin -y things that I need to do family stuff as well um and I just haven't got a chance this week so next week I'm going to do the ironing board cover and that's what I'm going to concentrate on I don't think it's going to be very difficult but it's going to take a bit of time because I'm going to be filming it so I just need to make sure I devote and have a bit of time set aside to do that so that's going to be next week I don't know what I'm going to do about fabric. Now, I do have lots of cotton and that's all you really need is some cotton, um, cotton fabric. But I don't know whether I like what I've got or whether I want to buy something new. I'm trying really hard not to buy anything. So I'm going to really try and make sure I find something that I don't... <laughs> you know something that's already in my stash <laughs> please stop me from buying more fabric okay <laughs> tell me in the comments don't buy, buy more fabric <laughs> so that's my that's one of my first plans is to get that done because I know so many of you have said you really want to see that so that's great my next plan is something that I've actually started already and I've got it here in front of me so I am making the page hoodie now, I'm having a little bit of a nightmare with the with the page hoodie nothing to do with the pattern pattern's great instructions are lovely fabric's great and the fabric's lovely <laughs> but I had a bit of a faux pas when I was cutting it out I don't think it's going to affect it but basically the fabric only has stretch in one direction so there's no stretch that way and there's a little bit of stretch that way so it's not mountains of stretch anyway but what have I done I've cut it the wrong way. I must have had equal amount. Well, if the fabric was 150 wide, I must have had one meter 50 in, in length. And I've just folded it the wrong way. I don't even know how I've managed to do that. I didn't even realize it until I was sewing it together. So never mind. I have got as far as, i show you, sewing the, the hood, but not lined or anything yet. It's just sort of sewn together. I haven't even ironed it yet. Um, I was sort of putting it together quite quickly last night so I've got the hood I've got the lining for the hood which I think goes again I didn't buy fabric I was trying to be really good but I've got um some fabric that I had made a, a t-shirt or a dress for one of my daughters in um and I think well it's going to be in the hood so I think that kind of goes that's okay and I've got some ribbing and what else have I done of it I have done the arms um, and back the arms the sleeves not the arms these are your arms aren't they <laughs> the sleeves the back and the front I have joined together um, but I haven't gone down the side seams yet and I have done the little rivets I don't know if you can see that there I'll talk more about these when I have finished making the garment but I've done that in the bottom and in the hood I've decided I changed my mind from what I had originally planned I was going to do this version here with the ribbing around the bottom and slightly lengthened but I've actually uh, after a lot of procrastination <laughs> I've decided to go with this version with the drawstring hopefully that'll be okay but you know I've messed it up anyway so if it doesn't go right It'll be fine. And this morning I received in the post from Amazon, good old Amazon, a great big bundle of, um, well, I guess really they're shoelaces, but they are very long ties. And there are a couple in there, which I think will, there's like this grey colour, which I think will go perfectly with that. And if not, I'll use the white. 
um, but I thought that'd be quite good because I feel like I'm going to make more of these hoodies so I thought it'd be quite good to have some more of these in my armour. The only thing I will say is I didn't realise there was going to be quite so many luminous ones. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to use the luminous ones. Hey, we'll see. You never know. So that is plan two. I think that's plan two. So plan three is to potentially make an apron. Now, I know this is, again, something very simple, but I am avoiding trying to make anything that is particularly fitted at the moment. I did speak about this in one of my previous videos about the fact that I'm just not happy with where I am at the moment and I don't feel comfortable in the things that I'm making and, and what have you. So I'm just, I just want to sew, but not feel pressured into fitting things um, at the moment. I will speak no more on it. <laughs> so an apron I thought would be a good idea. The apron that I have at the moment is disgusting. I've got one that somebody gifted to me years and years and years ago and I think it wasn't even new when they gave it to me. Um, they, were, they were just getting rid of it and um, I've used that for a long time and then I've got one that I bought which was cream in colour. Who buys a cream apron? because it doesn't matter how much I wash it, it always looks filthy. <laughs> Nobody wants to see somebody cooking in a filthy apron because you're gonna go like that. Ooh. Anyway, so I am going to make myself an apron. Again, I don't know whether or not I'm going to buy new fabric or whether I'm gonna try and find fabric that I already have in my stash. Now, I did have some fabric cotton fabric that my husband chose for a shirt it was an odd choice and I've never got around to making it and when I pulled it out I don't know in the last few months to show my husband say you do you remember you wanted a shirt of this he kind of went did I did I really <laughs> so I'm thinking I might make it out of that and that fabric is black and it has lots of little kitchen utensils all over it. So, I mean, it's kind of calling out to be made into an apron, isn't it? So I might use that. Um, but otherwise, if I don't use that, I'll, like I say, a bit like the ironing board cover, I'll go through, check, see what I want to use. And if I can't find anything, I'll buy something. But again, I shouldn't be buying anything. <laughs> so stop me from buying things. <laughs> okay, so next on the plan, and really nice and simple, is and Helen from Citric Repeat will be very delighted that I'm going to do this. We have been making, and I'm sure you've seen her video where she has completed the bag, and I'm sure she's set me up as a bit of a challenge to kind of go, come on, make it. And she has messaged me a couple of times saying, have you have you finished it? But we made the Factotum bag together, which was a Guthrie Garney uh, sewing society kit that we had both bought at least two and a half years ago and roughly two years ago we started sewing them together and there they sat in our boxes half made up for another two years and then she messaged me one day and went did you know it's been this long so we had another little get together and we finished our bags I think we had a very small amount to finish on our own if if not anything at all but we finished them and I am really pleased with how it's come out so I've done mine in this dark olivey green colour and it's got zip on the inside and then it's got this lovely beautiful sort of foresty fern fabric on the inside and what did I do I did a label which is a Guthrie Garney specific label on the inside pocket which says be happy yes be happy um, so I take what's on the inside out. So it's just got one single pocket, which wasn't in the pattern, but um, Lauren suggested if you wanted to do it, to do it at a certain point, and we both decided to put a pocket in. And we both put a little label, which is the label that came from Guthrie Garney within the kit that says me made on the side in the pocket. It has this little fold over, um, for the pockets. Now I think that they feel a little bit awkward to use but Helen's been using her bag and she said no, she said they, they're actually really useful pockets and they're really great. So I'm going to finish that. Now the reason I didn't finish it is because the length of strap that came with it, I think it's this one, I like to have a, how do I do it, a crossbody bag like that. I like a crossbody bag and this is just too short by the time the bag's on there the bag will be up here so I ordered some more fabric or some more webbing from Amazon again I think it was 
or was it? No, it wasn't. It was Minerva, actually. There we go. <laughs> um, and it's not the exact colour, but it's virtually identical. So I am going to use that. And it's just a little bit longer. It's, this is too long, but I'm going to try and work out exactly what I need and finish that bag. I mean, come on, what's that going to take me? 20 minutes at the very most? I need to get it finished. <laughs> So last but not least, the item that I think has a, or I don't think, it has a timely issue with it. So I was saying before that, you know, I'm not putting any pressure on myself, but there is one item and this is the one item that has got a time pressure on. So I think that doing certain things like getting involved in sewing challenges, maybe doing collaborations with people or getting together like doing the factotum bag it was really nice Helen and I got together we just decided to sew this we have both had a project in mind you just kind of get on with it and that's really nice and you feel like a sense of achievement when you've finished it so doing all sorts of things like that are all things that can really help with boosting your sewing enthusiasm and, and sort of relighting that fire if you like so I decided that I would get involved in a challenge now whether I actually complete it on time or not, I don't know. We're only on the 3rd of April, so I have got the whole of April. I'm sure you've heard about the challenge before, but it is the Sew April Blouse Challenge. And it's been run for a couple of years by the lovely Ruan, who is the Yorkshire Sew Girl, and Gabrielle, who is the Cloth Edit, uh, over on Instagram. So please do go and check out that hashtag. It's Sew a Blouse uh, April 24. I'm going to put all the details on the screen of how you enter, what you have to do, etc, etc, in, in order to be in with a chance of winning a prize. I don't want to say it because knowing me, I'll say it and I'll get it wrong. <laughs> so I'll just put the writing on the screen wherever it goes, here or here, wherever. Um, so I thought I would talk through a couple of the ideas that I've had. First of all, I thought I'd share with you some of the blouses that I've already made. I'm not necessarily going to remake these, but I just thought it'd be good to share them because they're blouse ideas. So the first one is the one that I'm wearing and it is the Atelier Dupe um, Frida blouse, I think it's called. So this is a really lovely blouse. It's, it's just um, got a lovely sort of small stand-up collar. Well, it doesn't stand up, it lays flat, but it, it has like a collar. Um, I don't know what you'd call that. It's a it's a like a collar stand but without a collar on it <laughs> and it opens there are no buttons or anything here it just um buttons up from about there down it has a yoke on the front um I'm trying to feel where it is yes two yokes so a yoke here with um really pretty sort of gathering um and then it's just nicely loosely fitted it has a really nice pleat detail in the sleeve and then it has a yoke on the back again with pleats or not pleats is it a pleat? It might be a pleat or gathering. I can't remember because <laughs> I'm wearing it. I can't see it. So I'm ever so organised, aren't I? <laughs> so I really like this blouse, but I will just say if you are intending on making this blouse and it's lovely and I would really like to make another one again, I would recommend that you go over to the very lovely Andrea who is beyond the pink door because she has a sew along for this blouse and she just adapts the pattern ever so slightly so that the yoke on the front is all in case because it's only like that on the back on the pattern and what she does just makes it a lot neater and, and finished much nicer and I, I just really like the finish on it and the way that Andrea does it and her tutorials are absolutely fabulous so please do go over if you intend to sew this blouse and use her sew along but go over and visit her anyway even if you're not going to do the sew along <laughs> so that's blouse idea number one blouse idea number two of blouses that i've already made is the sew over it pussy bow blouse now you have to excuse me i haven't um ironed this or anything and what i'm going to do i'm going to show you these garments but i will put pictures up on the screen um i made this a long time ago i haven't worn this for a very very long time I think this is a really pretty blouse and really lovely but the reason I don't wear this is because I think this looks very officey and very sort of office wear work wear kind of clothing and I think that's because of the style of the fabric that I've used but I do think that um, making this in a different fabric would make it more of a blouse I could wear with jeans and maybe like a blazer or something like that I think it's a really pretty pretty blouse in other fabrics you can do lots of different styles you can do the v-neck um, where the, the 
bow comes down um, to the V and ties there, but they also have another version where it comes up and it ties at the top and it leaves sort of an open V underneath the, the um, bow as well. So that's idea number two. Number three is, and I'm sure you've seen this, oh gosh, everything's falling over. Um, excuse this, it's not ironed, but this is the Wilder gown. Now, um, Karen from So Little Time and I actually were going to do a collaboration on this. She ended up making the dress and I ended up making the blouse because I didn't think the dress was my style at all. And I still don't. It's not really my cup of tea, but I love the idea of the blouse. And I'm really pleased with how this came out. We never did do the collaboration. We were shocking. No, Karen wasn't shocking. She kept to her end of the bargain. I let her down, I'm afraid. Sorry, Karen. Um, and her dress is lovely. Um, but this is the Wilder gown. And so this has got a gathered neckline, which is gathered together by um, a cord that you create using the fabric. It's got a seam down the middle. It's got raglan type style sleeves and it's got very loose fitting sleeves. It's a really beautiful blouse and something that's just really nice and easy to wear with a pair of jeans. And I think it can look sort of really quite dressed up. I do think for me, this is more of a wintry type style blouse. However, I have seen Alice who is the Polka Dot Palace on um, Instagram and she has made this and converted the pattern to make it a sleeveless blouse. And I love the idea of making that. I really, really want to try that one summer. I, I quite like that kind of halter neck type style. And I think it suits me and suits my body shape. So I would like to give that a go. And she uses the wild again. So I'll try and pop pictures of that up on the screen as well. But yes, I thought that was quite a nice blouse idea as well. The next blouse is one that I didn't like at the time of making, but I actually wear it quite a lot. Um, and that's because I had a bit of a fight when I was fitting it, but that's just me and my body and the body block. Um, but this is the Avid Seamstress, the blouse. Again, sorry, it's not ironed, but I will put pictures of me in wearing it. Now, I don't know what deems a blouse. I would say a blouse is something that's not made out of jersey. It's made out of woven fabric. And I would say a blouse is something that doesn't button right up to the collar. This does button up to the collar. And the reason I'm including it, because I would call this a shirt rather than a blouse, is because the pattern is called the blouse. <laughs> so I think it is a blouse. <laughs> So I really do like this. Like I say, I had a bit of a problem with fitting it, but now that I've made it, I do wear it an awful lot. I wear it with jeans. I've worn it to work with a smart pair of trousers. I just think it's a really nice blouse. It's sort of slightly oversized. It's got three quarter length or slightly longer than three quarter length, elasticated sleeves. Um, and it's just, it's just simple and hangs really nicely. And it's yeah, really quite an easy make as well. There's no yoke or anything like that. It's very easy to put together and I would really recommend this pattern. So that's another one that I've made previously. On to the last one that I've made previously. Again, not ironed, but I'll put pictures in. <laughs> this is the Tilly and the Buttons Marnie. Whew. Now, the Marnie blouse. I think the Marnie is a bit like Marmite. Maybe it was named appropriately, I don't know. But I think you either love the Marnie or you don't like the Marnie. And I and I I don't really know quite where I was with this. I I don't really think I liked it at all. But I got encouraged to make it because I was going away for a weekend with some other ladies and they were all making the Marnie blouse and I kind of went, oh, okay, I'll make it. And I made it and oh my gosh, I now love it. So go figure. Maybe sometimes you just need to try these things. I really like it. It's an oversized blouse. It's long sleeve. It's got these great big billowy sleeves. I mean, everything about this blouse is things that I don't like about clothing, but I really like it. Stop. It's just so funny. It's got a ruffle around the neck. I chose to use the plain yoke because you can do a yoke where it has beautiful sort of um, pin tucks um, that are all stitched in a zigzag sort of position or wavy position. And you can do the pin tucks across the arms as well, the sleeves. I keep calling them arms. Sleeves. I'll put pictures in of what that looks like. I've got a feeling you can do a ruffle around here or maybe it's a ruffle around the, the sleeves. I can't remember now. 
And I wanted to, because I was so fearful of ruffles, I wanted to make this as plain as I possibly could. So I only went for the ruffle around the neck. I have to say, I'm really glad that that's what I went for. I don't think I would have liked it as much if I had added all of the flounce because it's not me. But for some people, some people love that and it looks amazing on them. So that's absolutely great. And it's great that it's got that versatility that you can do either or really. I like the idea of having another go at this, but doing the pin text across the front, but I would like to use a plainer fabric, not necessarily totally plain, but something that will show that off a little bit more and obviously down the sleeves as well. I love wearing this with jeans. I think it looks really smart and put together, yet it feels really comfortable. I made this in a viscose twill, so it's just got a bit of a thicker feel to it. Obviously, because it's a bit thicker, I feel like I wouldn't be able to wear this in the summer. I think it'd be a bit too warm, but I definitely like the idea of making this again in a more lightweight viscose fabric. And again, adding those details across the front. So that's all of the blouses that I have made previously. Now I have now got a couple of ideas of blouses that I think would be great to have a go at, but I don't have um, either garments that I've already made or I don't have the patterns. So I've got the list in front of me. I'm going to have to look down because I won't remember their names. So two of the patterns or three of the patterns, should I say, are patterns that I own, but I haven't made. And the first one is a really old pattern. I don't know if it was one of the first ones that Tilly brought out, but it was certainly years and years and years ago. I'm sure you've seen this, but I just really love the style of it. I think it's just very chic and yeah, it's just got a lovely, a lovely sort of silhouette to it. But it's the Tilly and the Buttons all a blouse. And again, I'll put pictures up on the screen. I like the idea of this. I think it's got buttons down the back, which I really like the idea of. I like the um, detailing that it has in it. And I think it would be a lovely blouse. So that's one of the ideas that I have of a blouse that I haven't made, but I do have the pattern. Next one is the Sew Over at Libby blouse. So again, slightly more of a shirt type style, but it's much more open. So sort of the lapels sit back like that on the blouse, um, which I think is what then makes it a blouse rather than a shirt. Um, I quite like the idea of that. I've never made a blouse that has the double um, collar and the Libby does. And I really like the idea of that. I believe they've got a sew along for it too. And I just think again, this in the summer with a pair of shorts or a nice little skirt or even a pair of jeans on the slightly cooler days, I think it'd be a lovely, lovely addition to anybody's wardrobe. Then the last pattern that I have, which I've not made, is actually a dress pattern, but it can be made into a blouse as well. And that is the Maison Fauve um, Soliflor. Now, if you have followed Cara, who is so, so mad over on uh, YouTube and Instagram, she is an ambassador for Maison Fauve. And oh my goodness, she does them so much justice. Honestly, what she makes and what she wears is absolutely stunning and absolutely beautiful. And she has made the Solly Floor and just looks exquisite in it. I've seen it made up as blouses. I've seen it made up as dresses. I just think it is chic. It's stylish. It's really classic. And I so want to have a go at it. So that is definitely on my list, even if I don't get it done this April. And while we're on the subject, subject of Maison Fauve, they have a free pattern that somebody made me aware of a day or so ago. And that is the Tilda blouse. Now, if you watch, and I'm sure you do, and if you don't, why don't you? Um, Catherine from Soberton Makery, she is just delightful. And when she went to the Stitch Festival a couple of weeks ago, she was wearing a Tilda blouse and again, just looked absolutely gorgeous and absolutely lovely. It's a really lovely blouse. It's very simple. It's well, you know, it's a very simple sort of style and design, but again, it's got those chic sort of features to it from that sort of nod towards the, the French sort of classic design. And I really, really like that. Whew, I feel like I've just gone a hundred miles an hour at you. <laughs> but that is all of my blouse ideas. And that is all of the plans that I have for the next little while. Obviously, I'm not intending on making all of those blouses. Those are just my blouse ideas for you to give you some inspiration and ideas. Oh, I've just thought of another blouse. Oh, I'm really sorry. In fact, I've thought of two other blouses <laughs> just to do something a little bit different. So what about the new look 6217? I've just realised because it's written down in front of me and I've just not 
I've just not said about them, sorry. The new look 617 is a really simple, almost t-shirt type design, but in woven fabric. Again, really lovely, really simple. Um, and it's one of the big four rather than an independent, you know, just to give a bit of variety, really. Um, I quite like this. I've made it a couple of times, as has Helen from Stitch Root Repeat. It's one of her go-to patterns. She loves it. Um, I'll put up a picture of myself wearing it in a... Um, beautiful green sort of viscose fabric that I paired up and made a pair of trousers to go with it so it looked a bit like a faux jumpsuit and the other pattern which I think is completely different from all of the other blouse ideas is the Bathurst top and that is by Stitch Witch Pattern so this is a totally backless top I think it is gorgeous it's absolutely lovely i've made it for my daughter i made it in a pineapple fabric which is different again i'll put a picture up of what she looked like in that um unfortunately she's grown out of it now because so i made it for her a couple of years ago but i just again think that is a a blouse but with a real twist and a real difference to it i just think it's lovely right i will stop now <laughs> about all that well i hope that you're going to get involved in the so april blouse challenge i hope that you've enjoyed seeing what my plans are i know that they're not massively clothing wise um except for the blouses but that's what i'm just doing at the moment just to sort of keep keep my interest in and keep me sort of going i hope that's okay let me know in the comments if there are any ideas that you think um i should do or should um have a go at or try and stop me from buying some more fabric because that's really what I need to make sure I don't do. <laughs> um, but otherwise, have a really good week, everybody. I hope you're all well. What are you up to? What are you sewing? Let me know in the comments below and I'll speak to you later. Bye. <laughs> mm -hmm.